Star Wars The Force Unleashed has remained leashed for a disturbingly long time. But Darth Vader's secret apprentice is finally free to slash, push, toss, and, well, disappoint me horribly. This is really hard for me to say, but even judged by the ironically less than stellar reputation of Star Wars games, Force Unleashed falls pretty short of good. I have no interest in your failures, Commander. One of the few bright spots is the story, which focuses on Darth Vader finding a Force-sensitive kid and adopting him as his own apprentice in an effort to overthrow the Emperor. Dark side is your ally. It fills in the gap between the two film trilogies and does it really well. A lot of interesting stuff ends up canon thanks to The Force Unleashed. In fact, they probably should have made a movie out of this instead of The Clone Wars. Months of attacking Imperial targets and Vader sends a boy to fight me? The other really cool thing is the effort that went into the visual look of the game. Every character, ship, and environment is full of that classic used universe detailing. It all feels very much like Star Wars. Even places and things we've never seen before, like the junk planet Raxus Prime. The bad? Well, almost everything gameplay related. The apprentice controls a little shakily, especially in the occasional platforming sections. The camera isn't interested in helping you out either, which also impacts using force grip on objects. Since there's no way to really focus on an object reliably, you're reduced to grabbing what's handy and hoping the game figures out what you're trying to tell it to do. And then you will die. There's a nice level up system that gives you a surprising control over your character's growth, but you never quite feel a step above the enemies you're fighting. For a game that purports to be all about feeling like a badass and kicking Stormtrooper ass, you're pretty much on even ground most of the time. And really, the much-touted Euphoria system barely even functions. Enemies don't react to being tossed around much more than any other game's enemies, and sometimes they don't even realize that you're there. Hello? Anyone home? Hey! TK421! Why aren't you at your post? Lightning, maybe? Ah, screw it! Sometimes the game gets so glitchy you can't even fit through open doors. Oh, and the bonus objective in the final mission? Default text. In fact, the counters for force points and holocrons don't even work at all on this level. It's like one day everyone just stopped working on the game and went home. I'm sorry I failed you again. The boss battles are oddly disconnected from the rest of the game. Too often they're just enemies with a lot of health that are inexplicably immune to a bunch of your moves. Where the game should encourage you to be creative with your arsenal of abilities, it ends up constricting you. Even the now famous sequence where the apprentice rips a star destroyer down from the sky is a failure. You're a Jedi boy! In what should be the most badass moment in the entire game, you're reduced to slowly rotating a faraway ship into some arbitrary position so you can slowly pull it a couple of feet down before fending off a wave of TIE fighters. Then you do it all over again. This isn't even interesting, let alone awesome. The Force Unleashed is a collection of cool ideas that just never gels into the game it should have been. A mere two abused stormtroopers out of five. Star Wars The Force Unleashed 2 is the rare sequel that actually manages to address nearly all of the problems of its predecessor. Instead, it screws up in all new ways. Darth Vader's apprentice Starkiller died at the end of the first game, so now we play his clone. Vader's trying to create a new evil Starkiller to undo the damage done by the original. However, memories of the original's life and a pesky innate moral code keep foiling his efforts. Starkiller escapes to find the people who meant something to him in his former life. By the Force, I knew you were alive. Or the life he remembers but never lived. Or whatever. Clones are weird. It's really all just an excuse to murder the living hell out of stormtroopers by the gross. And Force Unleashed 2 delivers on that and then some. The clunky combat design of the first game has been greatly refined into a new system that makes almost all of your moves useful in different situations. Enemy types are mixed and matched smartly to force you to change tactics regularly. Level design is tighter and the boss battles are much better about providing positive feedback when you're doing the correct thing. Trouble is, there's not much content here. You can easily finish Force Unleashed 2 in 5 hours, roughly half the time it took to complete the first game. To make things worse, it ends on an abrupt cliffhanger without ever presenting much of a character arc for Starkiller. He's angry, 
and then angry some more, and then the credits roll. It feels unfinished and unsatisfying, both narratively and in terms of how much game you get to play. The story never goes anywhere and doesn't even know what to do with its special guest stars. The much-touted Yoda appearance amounts to a handful of lines in a five-minute Dagobah level in which you walk 100 yards and watch a cutscene. What about everyone's favorite badass bounty hunter who has never actually done anything remotely badass? Boba Fett. Well, here he is in this scene, and here he is in this shot. And that is it. That is all you get. You never meet him, never fight him, nothing. F you too, F you too. I'll need a squadron of stormtroopers. The tragedy here is that Force Unleashed 2 was almost a great game. But this is half a game. There's not enough story and not nearly enough content, but plenty of disappointment. Three horribly cruel stormtrooper deaths out of five.